Sarah is Caper. And Caper is a green winged macaw. Now, this is the second largest type of parrot in the world, showing off oh. that beautiful wingspan of his. And this type of parrot comes from the rainforest of South America, where he would spend his time high up in the trees on branches or vines and lianas, just like that. Um, Caper has been with us here at Point Defiance for almost his entire life. And at 18 years of age, he is considered a young adult. Parrots are extremely intelligent animals, and he is quite smart. Sometimes he likes to give us a hard time. Um, with our training, you might notice Sarah has to readjust herself for Caper to be a little bit more comfortable with where he's going to fly. And that's okay. We do like to give them that choice and opportunity to find something that's going to be most comfortable for them while showing off those beautiful natural behaviors that they have. So right now, Sarah is putting him on a couple of different perches and asking him to come to her from various angles. And just like how we have to go to the gym to build up our muscle strength, parents and all birds need to fly and practice working on that wing strength and building that muscle. So for Caper, he got a little bit of time off last year with the zoo being closed and not seeing people as much. So we're working on building up those muscles for Caper again. Okay, perfect. Sarah's going to work him one more time. He's doing a really great job um, in choosing to participate with Sarah. So she's going to go ahead and see if he wants to run his behavior again. So part of building that great relationship is knowing Sarah for most of his life, but also knowing that if he does what he has been asked, he is going to get all of his favorite snacks for us. Parents in the wild will eat different types of fruits and nuts and play off of play licks as well. So right now he's getting one of his favorite snacks, which are peanuts in shell. So we're letting him show off that really incredible beef. It's hard to see with the way that he's turned, but parents will use their feet to hold on to things and then use their extremely dexterous tongue to help manipulate. He'll leave that shell behind and eat most of that nut. He might leave some of the nut or with fruits, he will leave some of the seeds behind. That way when he comes back to that same part of his territory in 50, 60, up to 70 years, he will be able to have lots of fruit and nut trees, um, trees for him uh, in the future. Sarah is asking him to do a couple of other behaviors. She has him scream, um, and sometimes he shows off his wings um, or other behaviors such as that. And those are all behaviors that are something you would do in the wild or as a young bird. And we were able to capture them, give him a click and a treat, very much like when you train a dog using that clicker training. Um, so he knows that he's doing the right thing and getting a nice treat for it. So all things that he'd be doing in the wild. Thank you so much, Sarah, for introducing us today to the Are 
great additions for us here at the theater. Right now, Cassie is showing off a lot of the things that you can train your own dogs to do at home. She is showing her paws to Suzanne when Suzanne's asking for it. She's also putting her hand, or her head in Suzanne's hand. That way our veterinarian could look at her teeth or her nose or her eyes, giving her the opportunity to know that if she does the right thing, she's going to get a treat, and making her more comfortable with her handlers as well as our veterinarian. and does not really know our personal bubbles. Um, and that is something that being a younger dog, we think she's about two years of age, will come with time and understanding boundaries. Another thing that Suzanne is going to show off with Sassy, hopefully, is we have asked Harold, our dog, um, who is entering retirement, to fly in a hot air balloon and an airplane, to ride in a truck and a train across stage. And so for her, she's learning to jump in and out of those larger contraptions that she would have to for our show program, and asking her to do those things, and then eventually ride around a car in a cart doing that as well. Simulating a lot of those behaviors that we'll be able to <laughs> Hut. If you saw soil everywhere on the ground, that was her. Um, so being able to 
give her those opportunities to exercise is really important. If you guys visit our elephant farm, you might see Suki, our elderly Asian elephant. She also has an exercise plan. You may see her keepers working with her and sending her to different parts of her enclosure so she can walk around and get those joints moving, which is really important. So for our next animal, I'm just going to go ahead and close this and make sure I have everybody in place. And I ask everybody to stay seated for this next friend of ours, just to make sure nobody gets a wing to the face. So I will see if our next animal is coming on out. And she's doing a modified version of her routine. This is Ruby. Ah. And Ruby is a southern brown bill. And Ruby is going to come out. She is very good at coming out with um, her crates and coming to do her routine. But this is new for her coming out on her own. Oh, Ruby, you found the Siri was. <laughs> I should have known. Oh, man. Here you go, Ruby. You want to <laughs> um, so Ruby is a southern brown hornbill, which also comes from Africa, very much like our artwork friend Tilly. Whoa! And Ruby is trained to three sides in our incubator. So here she comes up. Wow! Definitely can fly. Hey, Monica. 